All right, everyone, we're just about ready to get going. Um, just want to let you know we are streaming here and on Facebook. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, just watching the participant um, count go up on both platforms is really, really exciting. Um, this is the next best thing to being able to be out on Hurricane with all of you. Um, so in just a second, we will orient you to kind of the webinar today, but just know that we are thrilled that you are here and joining us. Uh, so with that, uh, welcome to Hurricane Island's Educator Day Live. Uh, I'm Jen Page, I'm the Director of Education for Hurricane Island, and I'm also joined today with Phoebe Jekilek, who's our Director of Program and, Programs and Research. And both of us are kind of the ones that tend to do the Educator Day that we have on Hurricane Island on Earth Day every year. Um, and this year, we unfortunately can't physically be out on Hurricane Island, but the benefit of that is that we actually get to share Hurricane Island with more people than what we can fit on one boat. So silver lining in, in everything. Um, to kind of give you an idea of where we are headed today and make sure that you are all oriented, um, this is set up as a webinar format, not like a normal Zoom meeting. Um, so if you are over on Facebook, um, please like, subscribe, all of those wonderful things. But um, with all of that, you can put comments there and we have some of our staff members that will be helping to transfer those over so that we can answer questions that are coming up on Facebook while we're doing all of this. Um, if you are on Zoom with us, you should have a bunch of different webinar features that um, you can use to interact with us in a variety of ways. Um, you can make sure that you can hear us, which would be awesome. Uh, and if you actually want to ask a live question, um, the audio settings down there in the corner will help you turn on your microphone when we give you permission. Um, the chat feature, you can just send things to us, the all panelists in blue, or you can switch it over to all panelists and participants so you can chat to everybody if you'd like. Um, if you want to talk to us in live time, um, if you raise your hand, we'll know to kind of um, call on you essentially when we have the Q&A sections. Um, and if you don't want to talk, but you've got a question for us, um, then please go ahead and put it in the Q&A and it will gather all of the questions together. And even if we aren't able to get to them during this session, we will be able to get to them afterwards. So uh, very much looking forward to interacting with you. Uh, so before we get going, we want to kind of know who is out there. Um, if you are on the Zoom platform, there are going to be some polls that are coming up. We just have two of them, but it'll give you an opportunity to kind of tell us where you're coming from. Um, if you're on Facebook, I'm sorry that that part isn't going to pop up for you. Um, but we would love to know kind of what your hurricane history is. Um, and with that, I should... You should be able to see the poll coming up right now. Feeling good about it? Great. Okay. So uh, we want to know how many times you've actually been to Hurricane before. Um, your options are haven't been yet, because gosh darn it, we're going to get you out there if you haven't been there yet. Um, only a few visits, spent at least one night on the island. Programs, events, you name it. If it says Hurricane Island, I sign up. Or I have actually lived and worked there, and yep, you've made everybody jealous by this point. Um, so for Phoebe and I, our hurricane history, we actually came together um, in the same year, um, back in 2015, so it's been a while, um, but we've had that hurricane history for um, actually living and working there for quite some time and feel very, very lucky. So I'm going to end the poll right now. It's okay if you haven't been able to vote, um, but this way you should be able to see the results. Um, and we've got a really great mix of people that have been there a lot and some people that haven't been there yet. So hopefully we can we can get everybody out there um, at some point here. So thank you all for letting us know where you're coming from. Um, and then in terms of our hurricane history and who we are right now um, in the present day, um, we are gonna walk you through kind of where we are, who we are, what we are. Um, we're also gonna be premiering a new video, um, an island that teaches. We'll have time for Q&A in actually two segments. We're going to do kind of a Q&A, really more about our education stuff and things like that. And then we're going to actually do a virtual tour um, so that you guys can see the facility and then ask us questions about um, kind of what we have to offer physically there um, and have an ending Q&A. So that's our, our plan for today. And we're excited that you're with us. Okay, so where is our place? And you see I've got our in quotation marks. So this is the map of the state of Maine. Um, and down in Penobscot Bay, tiny little island off the coast of Vinyl Haven, um, we are normally made, 
based out of Rockland as our mainland office. And 12 miles off the coast, we get out there to Hurricane Island. And that's what we consider our place and the place that we're gonna be talking to you about today. And place-based education is a big part of what we do, place-based research. Um, so place matters to us. That being said, saying that it's our place, I just wanna acknowledge that we do work, um, uh, collaborate with Maine Wabanaki Reach, and we're gonna be getting them out to do a training with our staff this year on the island. Um, and in environmental education in general, uh, people are really trying to make sure that we're acknowledging the land that we're on and who and what has been there before. Um, and so when I was thinking about trying to do a land acknowledgement today, uh, we're not actually out on hurricane and everybody's calling in from a whole bunch of different places. Um, and so I really appreciate the statement from the executive director of Wabanaki Reach that um, the advice that she gives is to do a land acknowledgement from the heart. And in terms of what kind of is on my heart today, um, I want to be mindful that like we can all be really thankful that we have places that we say are ours and our Hurricane Island is where we have a sense of feeling at home. Um, and we also can appreciate that those places have been home to many others before us, not just us as individuals, not just as humans, kind of the collective us. Um, and I also wanna acknowledge part of the reason we can't be on our hurricane island today is we're all grieving the loss of our place in some way, shape or form. Things have been disrupted for us, our emotional place, our physical place. Um, and I think that with that, we can all kind of identify more deeply with people and things that have lost their place over time. So on Earth Day, today, always, I just uh, invite you, instead of just a moment of silence, a moment of feeling um, and understanding how important place is to everybody. Um, and after this session, um, Maine Wabanaki Reach actually has a drum circle um, that they're doing as an international connection to Earth Day. Um, so they're saying that you don't need to drum the whole hour. It's gonna be from noon to one and is really to help connect the whole world together um, on a day of celebration for the Earth. So I invite you to go join them after this. So back to now saying that this is our place. Um, this is Hurricane Island. It is gorgeous. It's gorgeous any day, but of course, this lovely drone footage on a, on a nice sunny day is fantastic. Um, and we are very lucky to be able to live and work out there. Um, you can see over on the, um, the right-hand side of the screen uh, where our kind of main campus is. The left-hand side, you can see our quarry um, where we get all of our water. Um, there's a lot of rich environmental, um, human history, all of the things there that we really enjoy. Um, so we would like to know where your place is. So this is the second poll that if you're on Zoom, um, is going to be popping up for you. Um, and we kind of want to know where, you're, where you consider your place. Um, so the poll should be popping up right now. Our place, um, we consider to be in Maine. Um, but then as you go concentric circles out from that, I know we all belong to planet Earth. Um, but try and choose the one that most directly represents your your place out of those um, as you go out from Hurricane Island. Um, and what you're looking at right now is kind of the view from a drone again of our main pier. Um, and so for those of you who have been out to Hurricane, this really is the gateway of the first place that you would walk onto the island. Um, all right, I am, it's okay if you haven't voted, um, but I'm gonna end the poll so that we can kind of see where everybody's coming from. We've got a lot of Mainers, but my goodness, I'm so excited. We had people register from all over the globe and I'm really excited to see that we have international participants as well with us today. So welcome everybody and thank you for coming to share our place with us today and um, for sharing where you are coming from and sharing your place. So with that, I'm actually going to turn it over now um, to, um, I already, we already shared your place, we're good to go. Um, but I'm gonna turn it over to Phoebe Jackalek to kind of walk us through who and what is Hurricane Island now that we've gone through where it is. So Phoebe, should be all good set for you. Awesome, thanks, Jen. Um, yeah, and thanks to all of you for joining us today. It is so fun to obsessively scroll through this participant list and see new names, see um, names from folks that have been bringing students to Hurricane for uh, six to seven years. 
um, board members, uh, friends of Hurricane, volunteers. So just thank you all for taking the time to join us today. Um, and uh, yep, we're sad not to be on Hurricane, but it still feels really great to be connected in this way. So thank you. Um, so I'm gonna take the next uh, about 10-ish minutes to talk about who we are and what we do um, and how we do it. Like Jen said, we're gonna go through um, some virtual tours later and show you a little bit more in depth of the facility itself and go a little bit deeper into um, the island and you'll even get a few moments of zen as we walk down some trails. Um, but I'm gonna talk a little bit about, uh, paint the picture of what we do on Hurricane, why we do it um, and how we do it. So our mission is to integrate science education, applied research and leadership development both through year-round educational programs um, that we do in our local communities and beyond, and also on our seasonal environmentally sustainable island community. Um, it seems like a fair amount of you have been to Hurricane, but we've had about almost 20 additional people join since we did that first poll. So, um, you know, for those of you who haven't been to Hurricane, we're gonna, we're gonna learn a lot about what it means um, for us to be environmentally sustainable. So, on Hurricane, um, we run programs May through October. So our first program was actually slated to start um, this weekend and it was an adult program. We partner with like-minded organizations like Wilderness Medical Associates, um, the Institute for Bird Populations um, to offer programs where anyone can sign up and they can come to Hurricane um, and basically have a program delivered by Wilderness Medical Associates or other like-minded organizations. Um, so our first one was supposed to be this weekend. Uh, and unfortunately, those have been, have moved on, uh, but we have many opportunities for things like that to happen out there. Um, a big part, let me see if this, oh, there we go. A big part of who we are and really what we're hopefully looking forward to is um, welcoming students from middle and high school to our summer programs. Um, some of you I saw in as you registered that you are parents, you've sent your students to us, um, so thank you. Some of you have registered students for this year's summer programs um, for the first time, so thank you. Uh, and we do hope that that happens. I'm gonna take just a minute to talk about what those programs look like. So all of our programs on Hurricane, all of our education programs really use science as a lens for leadership. Um, in these pictures, you can see a couple different things happening. Um, on the left picture, you can see students in the intertidal zone um, basically using a quadrat. It looks like perhaps they're doing a count. They're maybe doing some um, percent cover counts to understand what's happening in the intertidal zone. In the woman in the pink shirt there, that's our previous research director, Caitlin Cleaver. So, you know, a big part of what we do is really having students interact with our researchers, with our educators, with our staff um, to really understand what the process of science is like. Uh, they're also, that kid on the right hand side there in the picture is holding what's called a stadia rod. So they're doing some understanding of climate change, um, sea level rise, understanding um, the influence of uh, our impact as humans on the earth around us. In the right hand picture, that is part of our middle school marine biology program. Um, those kiddos are holding up a bunch of what we know and love as kelp. Um, some of you are familiar with kelp. Uh, some of you might be in California and have a whole other kind of kelp, but we grow kelp on our own aquaculture site, which I'm gonna talk a little bit more about. Um, and these students had harvested that and they were collecting data on kelp growth. Uh, we do give the opportunity to eat it sometimes. Um, so again, we're really using the research that we do on Hurricane and the island itself as our classroom to um, take what students are learning in their home classrooms or in their home labs and put the, put the ocean to it, you know, get their hands dirty, get them out in the ocean, get them out on boats, um, get them working with people and get them understanding the world around them from a very visceral and very experiential place. Um, sorry, I lost my, my little place there for clicking through. Um, another big focus of ours, no matter who we are or no matter who's coming to Hurricane, is sustainability. We are a sustainable island community, so we are powered by solar. Uh, we have nothing but composting toilets, and we'll see what those look like a little bit later on. Um, and we offer programs for students to understand what that means. Um, specifically, our summer programs, we have sustainability leadership program where students come for a week, um, and we engage them in uh, sustainable leadership from all aspects. Uh, we really do in this program use 
a lot of engineering techniques and offer students the opportunity to develop um, and engage with our facilities team to develop sustainable infrastructure on the island. So the picture on the left, uh, those students are actually installing a water catchment system on one of our outhouses. Um, so that water catchment system will then be used to provide water for students to wash their hands with in the outhouse. Um, and then later we'll see a picture where students then the following program took and built on what those students did in that sustainability program um, and they built a biofilter to then filter the gray water um, that came out of that outhouse after students were washing their hands. So again, it's about connecting the dots, you know, using the island as a classroom, using our commitment to, commitment to sustainability um, as a teaching tool and a place, a jumping off point for students to develop their own questions, develop, um, you know, develop solutions and find ways to try and answer those questions and tackle those questions. And the picture on the right is just a, of course, a beautiful solar panel uh, illustrating our commitment to solar. Um, and again, um, we use, again, science as that lens for leadership. So uh, these are some pictures of students engaging in some other uh, kind of team building activities that we use to really get kids on the same page. Um, and actually, I should say not just kids, but adults. We have some programs that come out and use this as a site for retreat. They ask, uh, they ask our staff to deliver some of our team building activities. Um, each one of these team building activities has a connection to science. So on the right hand side, you can see that students are, um, what they're doing is that they're building a uh, raft. We call it our raft building challenge. And I'm sure some of you on this call have engaged in that yourself or had students engage in it. Um, but we open up that uh, activity with a discussion about buoyancy and the importance of buoyancy and what the um, buoyancy does for in the ocean and how they're gonna use it in this activity. We teach them to tie knots, and then we give them a bunch of basically materials, so some lines, some floats, and actually that looks like a lot of floats. We've decreased our number of floats that we give students nowadays. <laughs> this is an old picture. Um, and then they get three to five poles. And out of that, those students have to come up with a design for a raft that will carry all of their teammates from one side of our ice pond, you'll see a picture of that a little later, to the other. Um, so it really uses um, the process of co uh, communication, um, critical thinking, um, collaboration, uh, solutions-based thinking, and you know it takes a lot, a lot for these kids to um, put these rafts together. And I've only seen a couple of successful rafts in my time. Some of you may have seen more, but in my this is my sixth season, so in my uh, five years of being out on that island, I've seen just a couple of successful times, but that's part of science, right? That's part of the experimental process. Um, and that is what we wanna teach students that you can, um, you know, to go through the process, ask the questions, try it out. And if you fail, try again, come up with another option. Um, that's what's really important to us about using the scientific process as a lens for leadership. So those are our summer programs, and we'll have time for more questions about those. Um, but you can find a lot more information about those programs on our website um, under summer programs. Um, some other opportunities. So when we're not on the island, um, or I guess when we're on the island and then also when we leave the island, we are really using aquaculture as the basis for a lot of not only our research, which I'll talk a little bit more about, but also an, a broader educational resource. Um, these students right here are uh, picking spat bags. So they're cleaning a spat bag. A spat bag is what we deploy to catch our baby scallops that we then grow up. Um, and spat bags are a really unique teaching tool uh, because they allow students to get in, get their hands dirty, and it really connects them to the research that we're doing on hurricane that then connects to our broader community in Penobscot Bay um, of aquaculture. So we engage students in all of the work that we're doing on Hurricane um, in spat bags is a really easy entry point. Uh, last year, we processed about 45 spat bags. So almost every single program that comes to Hurricane has the opportunity to, um, to dig through and, um, and uh, see what's in a spat bag. And we're using those as a basis for even broader programming um, year round with our local schools. Uh, this past year, we had four, five different schools deploy spat bags um, 
in our local waters, okay, so each school partnered with a local fisherman to deploy their spat bags, and they're going to collect their spat bags, and we're going to get an idea, basically a transect from north to south in Penobscot Bay, um, to understand what those larval dynamics of scallops look like um, from their spat bags. So they're going to take them back. Uh, actually, they're going to give them to us because school is out, but um, we're going to count them and we're going to make sure that they get their data. And we're hopefully going to expand that project in the future moving forward. So those spat bags are a really easy entry point um, to highlight the importance of um, connecting with your local community, connecting with your local environment. Um, and that all feeds into our aquaculture and education that we do both on and off the island. Um, again, oops. There we go. Yeah, so um, a lot of our year-round programming does focus on aquaculture. Right now, we had um, students in Portland High School growing kelp, and I'm not sure, Jen, are those kelp still being watched by the uh, janitors in the school, or have we passed them off? Uh, we had an um, unfortunate um, uh, evaporation event, so oh. uh, the kelp is, is not very happy right now, but they were being watched very closely by the janitors and being shared um, back with the students, so you don't win them all. <laughs> gotcha, and Jen, I've actually lost my ability to um, control this puppy. There we go. So it's kind of scrolling on its own. I will. There we go. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sorry, everybody. Um, so yeah, so we are working with um, students on North Haven, Vinyl Haven, students in Oceanside High School, which are all local high schools here, um, St. George for that spat bag project. And these are some pictures of some of the first students that we ever had grow kelp in their classrooms. Um, what's really great about using aquaculture as an educational resource is that it has a lot of entry points um, in the classroom as well. So we had one teacher who developed an entire year long curriculum um, using the growing of kelp as the basis. So they, students um, not only grew kelp in their classrooms, but they learned the chemistry, they learned the biology, they learned the life history. From that, they developed their own business plans about how they would sell their kelp. Um, they developed marketing plans um, and basically did a bunch of product testing in their own communities. So it's a really great entry point to kind of explode on all different options of how you can take um, you know, take what we're doing on Hurricane and actually use it in the classroom, even if you're not in Hurricane. Um, you know, so we'd be happy to talk to anyone about what that looks like. Uh, we can even guide you through it from afar. Uh, but these are some pictures of students actually um, sporing the kelp in the bottom left right here. They're getting the spores. They're spooling a very thin line that the little kelp spores actually settle on. Um, and then those spools are deployed um, the line comes off and it goes on this bigger line that we then put on our aquaculture site. And I will definitely show you a picture of that um, in a little bit. We actually have a video. We do a lot of teacher professional development. Um, currently, we have a cohort of teachers um, that Jen is working with, um, many locally, some more distant. Um, but really, the whole idea is to engage teachers in the idea of place-based education. So even if you're not on Hurricane, how can you connect to your place and use your place as a basis for education um, and engaging students in project-based learning um, and experiential learning and opportunities like that? So we do teacher professional development both on Hurricane um, and off Hurricane. And Jen can answer some questions about that in the Q&A. Um, a big part of who we are is also engaging um, undergraduate and graduate research opportunities. And this can look a few different ways. This looks like uh, universities and colleges bringing students to Hurricane Island for field courses. Um, and we have five to seven different universities and colleges that currently do that now. And we're going to be expanding that hopefully with the development of our field research station over the next few years. Um, so if you are a university or college faculty and are interested in bringing students for a field course to Hurricane, please feel free to reach out about that. We can talk more about that. Um, we also offer undergraduate and graduate opportunities for internships and engagements over um, not only the summer months, but also May through, May through October. Um, we have a couple different graduate projects going on on our aquaculture site um, where we partner with them to complete that research. Um, we generally take on interns every year uh, for our summer 
months, basically uh, early June through mid-August. Um, and those are generally undergraduates, uh, can, be, um, can be beyond um, a bachelor's degree, uh, but we do really try and uh, provide opportunities for undergraduates to get hands-on experience. And so they can do that in our facilities team, they can do that in our education team, we have research um, experiences, uh, and all of those, uh, more information is available either through us or on our website. So these are really important. I put these figures up here because these figures, um, and I'm pretty sure that perhaps Hallie, a member of Hallie's family is on here, um, but these figures are some of the research that one of our undergraduate interns did last year. She was looking at the difference in pH between kelp grown in cultured situations, like on our kelp line, um, kelp in wild populations, and also then a couple other different species of um, seaweed that we generally find in our waters. So Hallie was out there measuring, uh, she was out there measuring pH twice a day. Uh, again, she had to do it with the ties, so she measured it twice a day for four weeks. Um, and she developed that, those questions on her own. We helped her um, field support and you know, basically help provide materials and work through that process, data analysis. Um, and these are some of the figures that she presented at uh, an undergraduate research symposium at UMaine um, in August of last year. So again, it's really important to create the opportunity for students to get hands-on experience doing research um, out on Hurricane. And then that can look like field courses or um, working with us in internships. Um, so then the last thing I'm gonna talk about is that another big part of who we are is our community-driven research. And I mentioned it before, but we're very dedicated to integrating that research into our education opportunities. And we're also very dedicated for, to that research being collaborative. Um, the bottom left picture is a picture of us on one of our collaborating scallop fishermen's boats uh, years ago as we were monitoring um, scallop populations in a closed area uh, in the Muscle Ridge, um, which is basically off of Tenants Harbor here. The right hand picture um, shows you the location off the north end of the island of our current 3.2 acre aquaculture site. Um, from this original uh, scallop closed area project, we started collecting tons of baby scallops in those fat bags and um, aquaculture is on the rise in Maine. It's seen as a way to diversify, um, uh, diversify e the economy um, for fishermen and for any member of the Maine community. Um, so aquaculture is really growing, we're using it in our education, and we've also expanded to basically focus our research on that for the next few years. There we go. Um, so what does that look like? So this is a video of baby kelp. How cute is that? So I mentioned earlier that we had students growing kelp in the classroom. This was taken um, under a microscope in the classroom. Uh, and this is what students get to see uh, as they are developing their own kelp growing programs and projects. Um, so this is where it all starts. And as you can see, it's a great jumping off point. Um, for education, you can talk about all kinds of things. I mean, this is right here, a, a plankton lesson for me. It's where my brain goes. Um, so that's just a video of baby kelp. And where does that end up? That ends up on our aquaculture site. So this is what it looks like after we deploy it on our aquaculture site. Um, uh, kelp is a winter growing uh, species. So you basically deploy it in the fall, uh, in October, November, and then you come back and you gather it up in April and May. And so for us, it's a perfect educational intersection because students can start the year growing their own kelp. They come out um, the end of September, beginning of October, deploy it on our kelp line, and then they come back in the spring um, to collect their kelp and collect their data. Um, we also are partnering with Bowdoin right now, doing a comparative study of kelp growth um, in two different sites in Maine. So Bowdoin has their own. Uh, aquaculture lease that they're growing some kelp on and they came and they deployed the same species in the same uh, experimental setup and so we're going to um, compare what those growth rates are uh, and you know kind of understand how kelp is growing in different parts of Maine. So again it's not only research, it's not only education, they're integrated together um, and there's a combined opportunity for learning there. Um, the other big part of what we do is our scallops. So I guess maybe I'll ask you to engage. Raise your hand in the chat list over there. If you've touched a scallop, been squirted by a scallop on Hurricane, 
or anything like that. All right, yes. Ooh, look at all those hands. Oh my gosh, there's so many. Oh, it's great. So yeah, so this is our other species that we grow on our aquaculture site and we use for the basis of a lot of our research um, and engage students with again. Um, hopefully we'll get to welcome all of you out to Hurricane um, and you can get squirted by your own scallop and scallop experience. I'll just take a moment to point out all these little black dots for those of you who don't know, those are actually eye spots. So scallops can actually uh, sense light. And so they have about 300 of those puppies. Um, and we'll move on to this next picture here. Um, so this is really highlighting some uh, three parts of the research that we're doing. These right here are spat. So this is a, a little pencil tip. So when I say spat, I mean itty bitty baby scallops that are about the size of your pinky. Um, so this is what students are pulling out of our spat bags. And those go directly into our cages and nets to grow into larger scallops um, on our aquaculture site where we're studying growth rates. So these are scallops that are getting ready to be tagged to understand growth. Um, we actually have a cooperative or a collaborative project going on with you Maine right now to understand growth rates at different aquaculture sites throughout Maine. So um, there are about six different farms participating in that research. Um, and we take quarterly uh, length measurements of scallops on our farm and compare those to what they're seeing on other farms. Um, so we're looking at scallop growth rates and the effects of gear on scallop growth. And in this picture right here, we're also looking at um, spawning and gonads in scallops. So these two kind of large pieces of the anatomy here, those are actually the gonads of scallops. This is a female scallop and this is a male scallop. And uh, we're actually partnering with other farms again across Maine to understand spawn timing, which then feeds back into when we can collect our spat to put back into our farms. Um, so again, it's collaborative research that we're committed to that integrates very well with our educational opportunities. Um, and we'll just, just I think the last, oh, we actually do a fair amount of diving also. Um, this year we're gonna be looking at not only um, spawning in our uh, cultured scallops, so scallops grown on farms, but we're also gonna be looking at spawning in the wild population. So we do a fair amount of diving on hurricane to collect scallops and to assess our wild populations. And I just put this in there to give you an idea of what it looks like under there. It's very dark and very green. Um, so if you've never been underwater in Maine, uh, it's chilly, but it's really worth it. There was a big um, lobster there that we passed as we went by. Um, and here's just an example of some of the data we've collected. So uh, on our research to understand spawning and larval dynamics, this is a comparison looking at the GSI, which is basically, um, uh, it's telling you what percentage of energy scallops are putting into reproduction versus the rest of their um, energy output. Um, so yeah, that's just some of the research that we're doing. And again, it's really important for us to do this collaboratively uh, we're looking for more collaborations. Um, you know, I mentioned undergraduate and graduate research before. This is a great opportunity um, to have op or have research launched on our on our aquaculture site, uh, which is one of the only two research aquaculture sites in the state. Um, so, you know, there's a lot that we can do, and again, we want to engage people around thinking about science, sustainability, and leadership, not only on Hurricane but in your own community. So I think we're moving on to, now we have a, oh, yeah, we're moving on to the next video launch. We are. And as we move on to the next one, um, I want to say a big shout out to Caroline Albertson, who is our um, marketing and stewardship coordinator. She's been moving some things over from Facebook um, chat over to here. And I keep looking over to the side. So I've got the Facebook live feed up there and over here. But one of the cool things that she brought over is that Bill and Chris Nolan are watching us on Facebook right now. And they shared in the comment that their grandmother was born on Hurricane in 1880. So a really cool connection thinking about all the different people that are watching us and the history that um, is being brought in. So thank you, Caroline. And thank you, Bill and Chris Nolan. Um, so for this next one, we actually are premiering our Island That Teaches video. Um, we we're very lucky to have been working with um, Wilder Nicholson the past, um, man, it's been, I think, almost as long as Phoebe and I have been here, if, if not, <laughs> 
<laughs> the entire time. Um, and he's been the one that's helped us produce a lot of the, um, the, vid the kind of lengthy videos that you've seen on our YouTube that kind of go into more, what does a day in the life look like? What do our sustainable systems look like? Um, and did that through a um, fellowship with Compass Light Productions. So this most recent one, this is going to be the first premiere of it you get to see. Um, it's about six minutes in length. And right after that, we're going to stop and do a Q&A. I already see some people are putting questions into the Q&A box. So feel free to do that while the video is playing. And we will um, look forward to talking with you as soon as this is done. Hearing a lot of people asking me about sound. Um, so we are going to make sure, because I can hear the sound, I'm gonna take my earbuds out and see if we can uh, stop that. You guys are so patient and I sincerely appreciate it. All right, can you hear me? Okay, Phoebe's nodding her head yes, which is super helpful. Um, and then we are gonna try this again. We're gonna go all the way back. Oh no. Phoebe and I. This work. Hmm. It's okay. It's okay. Thank you, Salman. I appreciate you saying it. it's okay in the in the chat. I really, really appreciate it. All right, I will try one more thing, and after that, we will just go with it. We can also email it out to people afterwards. I think we pretty much have most people, most people's emails anyway, from um, registering for the webinar. We do. And it will be posted later on our um, social media outlets as well. So those of you on Facebook Live, you'll also get to see it. All right. Oh, my heart is sad. But um what i think i will do right now is just have this um playing a little bit in the background or i'll just have it playing in the background so you guys can see the, the beauty that is hurricane island um and we do have questions coming in in the q a um so uh the first one um i think that <laughs> uh phoebe i know you answered directly to kim but kim um had asked us how we tag a scallop so do you want to answer that to kind of everybody so they understand how we tag a scallop yeah so there's actually two ways to tag a scallop the scallops in that picture um those little <laughs> those little numbers those little plastic numbers are actually from chicken tags um so you can order thousands of chicken tags um off the internet and then we cut those um, just so that we have a, you know, basically a series of numbers. We take that very small tag and we use a marine epoxy um, to attach it to the shell. And so you can, um, it's a very small amount of marine epoxy and it cures in the water, which is great. So the scallops um, only need to be taken out of the water uh, at the very beginning when you tag them. Um, and then, you know, put it back in the water and we still have some tags that have been on there for about five years. So it can be very strong and the scallops just grow right along with them. Great question. Great. Um, we had a question from Rhonda as well, asking how old you have to be to work here. Um, and that is a great question and one that is constantly evolving. So this summer, um, we're planning on piloting our first um, high school intern programs. Um, one that is a general high school intern program and one that is specific to um, aquaculture in the Gulf of Maine. Um, so we have those and those are open to high school students. Um, but other than that, in terms of working here, we have summer interns at the undergraduate level. Um, and uh, then after that, a lot of like our educators um, end up being people that have 
more life experience, um, more work experience, or a degree um, in a particular discipline or something like that. So as soon as you get into college, we've got a typical undergraduate intern program, and then the uh, high school interns is, is this year. Hi, Rhonda. Rhonda's from my hometown of Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania. Oh, that's awesome. So th thanks for joining, Rhonda. All right, and Bonnie Taylor. Um, Bonnie Taylor, uh, we are very thankful that you're on here. Um, so Bonnie is a teacher that brings students to us each year. She's asking what the remainder of the season is going to look like um, considering the COVID-19 shutdowns. Very good question. Um, right now, we are planning on running the rest of our summer season into the fall. Um, our board is meeting at the beginning of May um, and going to take kind of all of the world's everything into account. Um, to figure out what programs look like. But Phoebe has already been out with Silas Rogers, our facilities manager, um, and the aquaculture and research um, is franking. So yeah. I don't know if you wanna talk about kind of how that's gonna proceed, Phoebe. Yeah, so we'll be continuing to go out on a very regular basis um, and stationing ourselves out there um, starting in May. Uh, and we will be doing um, some live feeds from Hurricane. I'm going to try and do them from the aquaculture site, um, but we will also be doing, you know, continue kind of video updates about what we're doing and trying to get you out on the boat with us, um, walking around the island. We have some videos uh, that are already in process that we're going to be putting out um, on our social media outlets and on the website. Um, so do stay tuned. Some of those are um, kind of... Uh, I guess like lesson based and some of them really are just walks around the island. Um, we're going to do an intertidal transect. Uh, we're going to do some methods videos. So, you know, definitely keep your eyes out for that. Um, but we will keep the community posted as soon as we know more um, as time kind of rolls on there. We have no more Q&A in the actual um, Q&A section. I do see four hands that are raised and those four hands could very well be people that left their hands up after um, letting us know whether they had been squirted by a scallop before. Um, so if you left your hand up, you can lower it. But otherwise, I see that down to one attendee that has their hand up, maybe to ask a question. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, so Sarah Bright, as long as you're good, we're gonna actually allow you to talk and ask us a question. Um, so, I'm gonna allow you to talk. You have the ability to unmute yourself, so we're not gonna force you to talk if you're not ready to. But um, <laughs> Sarah, if you're there, go ahead and unmute, and we'd love to hear from you. I so appreciate this. I, I think I hit the button accidentally. I don't really have a question, but I will just um, say how impressed I am with the work that you guys are continuing to do and um, the promise that you're providing for the rest of us. And so keep it up. <laughs> that was super awesome. Thank you, Sarah. We really appreciate it. Cool. Anybody else want to... Um, Call or hand up with a question. Oh, Bonnie has her question or hand up now. So we're going with Bonnie. Bonnie, what can we do for you? So excited you're there. I, I just wanted to um, piggyback on that statement. I don't really have a question at this point. I'm, I'm excited that things are going to keep moving forward. Um, you know, and that you're, you're hoping to, to be bringing people to the island sooner rather than later. It's a very difficult time for all of us, I'm sure. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm watching this and I'm getting a little choked up myself. You're, 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 you're um, beginning to the video or to our time together was very poignant. You know, we all have places that we hold very dear and to watch um, the video and see my students and the, and, and remember the experiences that they've had there have been um, uh, very heartwarming for me today. So thank you. Thank you, Bonnie, from all of us. And I, um, that is a really good note too, that a lot of it was hard to not have that video shown because the, the, a lot of the students in that video were Bonnie's students and the notes that they, the, the voiceover pieces that they had of like turning away from their phones and actually having conversations with each other and the, um, the idea of like walking away really feeling like they could make a difference in the world and, you know, the community that they felt like, we are very excited to share that video with you on YouTube and Facebook and everything later on today. So it will be up live. You will be able to see it. Please 
um, please watch because it is uh, some of the, the best sound bites we've ever had about Hurricane Island and the power and the impact um, on students. And thanks, Bonnie. We really appreciate the comment. All right. Uh, the last, uh, we do have a, another question that came in in the Q&A. So how can educators get students involved? Um, yeah, <laughs> Phoebe and I both dance. Uh, we want students involved in a lot of different ways. Um, so educators can recommend students for our internship program. Educators can pass on our information about our summer programs to get students individually to come to us. We've got um, great opportunities there, and Phoebe can talk more about that. Um, we can bring your class out to Hurricane. Um, we can connect all the the work that we do on the island to your standards, whether it's math, science, history, next gen science standards, all of the above. Um, happy to, to connect with you about that. Um, so there's, yeah, there's just lots of ways. Um, so Phoebe, in terms of the summer programs or anything else you wanna add, kind of good ways of getting people involved and making sure they can come? Yeah, absolutely. So if you are a parent or a teacher that has students that you think would be interested in our summer programs, you can absolutely visit um, our website, uh, www.hurricaneisland.net. Uh, it's right up there and there is a tab that says programs. And if you click on that tab and scroll down, you'll be able to get to all of our summer programs um, from there. And actually, Jen, if you wouldn't mind while I'm chatting, putting that in the chat over there, that would be helpful. Just a link yeah. directly to the programs page. To our programs. Yep. yep. Um, and then if you're a teacher that is thinking about bringing your students to Hurricane, absolutely. We can make that happen. Um, just so you know, Bonnie brings her students from Philadelphia. So we get programs and schools coming from all over um, the Northeast. And I guess, I guess Pennsylvania is almost just down there in the mid-Atlantic. So, uh, you know, we're interested in working with you to make it possible for you to bring you and students no matter where you are. Um, so feel free to shoot me an email. Uh, my email is also on the last slide, but it is phoebe at hurricaneisland.net. Um, and I will put that in the chat right here. And it's also on the last slide that you'll see at the end of our presentation. Um, and uh, another great way, and you know, Jen mentioned the internship opportunities. Um, another great way for people to get involved, um, be it educators, be it students, um, is to come out for a volunteer day. So thanks, Pam, for that little shout out right there. Um, uh, it's a great way to get students out to the island, to get you out to the island. Uh, and those volunteer days are really about coming out and um, getting dirty and learning about the place while contributing to, um, to our work out there. Uh, we have three volunteer days a year. This year, we only currently have one in October. We've had to cancel our first two, but that's okay. We may or may not um, reschedule them, but definitely stay tuned. So again, if you have any further questions kind of about getting students out, um, that would be great. Send me an email and, and we can uh, talk and have figure out what makes the most sense for you. I just want to, um, we will have, so this Q&A is kind of our pause in the middle, and if people need to go, that's totally fine. If people want to actually see our campus, um, we have little virtual tours that we're going to run here in just a second, um, but we have a couple more questions before we get to that, and then we'll do another Q&A at the end. Um, just want to shout out, thank you, Jen, Jennifer Cross, for letting us know that both uh, of your two students are both so excited about being part of our high school aquaculture internship this summer. We are excited to have them. Um, and uh, we have some requests to order Grubhub from the galley. Um, I know some of our past chefs, our head chef from last year is on here today. Um, so shout out to all of our fabulous kitchen chef, cook, kitchen assistants, everybody that helps with our food, because if you've been out to Hurricane, you know that that is one of the, the true stars of what um, the experience is. Um, and then we have a question um, about funding and kind of where we get funding from. Um, and uh, I won't go into like the breakdown because I'm sure I will get numbers wrong, um, but this, the question specifically was about government funding. Um, and so what sources? Um, we have been going this year for more government funding, um, looking at like NOAA grants. Um, Phoebe, if you want to talk about for the research end of things, um, any of the ones that we're looking at right now. Yeah, actually, Lauren, I'll, um, I'll type you an answer um, or, or reach back out to you just in the interest of time. Um, but I'm happy to, you know, to kind of discuss that further. 
All right. So with that, we will uh, get on to kind of the virtual tour end of things um, and start moving that direction. So uh, Phoebe, I'm gonna turn it back over to you to kind of go through virtual tour with us. Sweet. So for those of you that don't know, we're on an island and you can only get there by boat. So one of the first things that happens when you come to Hurricane um, is that we meet students on the mainland, we pile everyone onto a boat and we pile all their luggage onto a boat and we do the same thing on the other side. Um, you know, so when you're thinking about coming to Hurricane, packing is a good, good thing to talk about with your students. Um, I'm actually going to try and pause this if I can get my little guy to show up here. There we go. Um, so packing is a, um, is a good thing. Rolly bags are not the best. That's all you got. It's totally fine. But uh, we lose a couple wheels when you're going across, um, going across our very loose gravel and whatnot. Um, so some of the places that you might stay, this is the, an example of a cabin. Uh, you saw the cabin um, outside. We have cabins that hold six to eight people and cabins that hold two to four people. Um, this is what the inside of a cabin looks like. Uh, one of our cabins there and we provide a mattress and a bed frame um, and students have to bring everyone has to bring their own bedding so that's something to keep in um, keep in mind um, so this is one of our little cabins that has a little loft and then you know two to four bed frames downstairs we also have yurts as a housing option um, the yurts we actually have cots um, in the yurts, so we can fit anywhere from Depends, eight to 10 people. It can get pretty packed in there, but those are open spaces, but they're really beautiful. We also have our main housing facility is the bunkhouse. So um, these are all sliding uh, barn doors um, and we can fit about 30 people in our bunkhouse at a time. Uh, and it has rooms that fit two to three students and up to six students. Um, and then the bunkhouse is also attached to another teaching space, which is called the Swallow's Nest that we'll see a picture of here in a moment. Little cursor again. Come on, buddy. There we go. Um, and so just so you know, um, I'm actually going to pause this for a second. Uh, there might be a question out there about capacity. We can house about 60 to 70 people. Um, one housing option that we didn't show was our wall tents. Uh, we do have a couple wall tents that can house two to three people. So um, we max out at about 70 people um, between our bunkhouse, our cabins, our yurts, and our wall tents. Um, and that's a lot of people for us. Uh, you know, if we had 60 to 70 people there every day for six months, our clevises might not be able to handle it. <laughs> um, this here is our swallow's nest. So it's another teaching space. It's actually connected to the bunkhouse. Um, so this is where we have larger groups used as their teaching space. Um, sorry, my cursor isn't working here, Jen. Do you, I was gonna say, do you want me to help with that or are you? I'm just gonna carry on. All right, so we're now we're looking at our bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, all of our toilets are composting toilets. We have a foam flushing toilet, which is the first toilet that you saw. Um, you actually press a button and a bunch of foam comes into the bowl and uh, there's no flushing, no water involved. Um, these are our outhouses. We have a few different outhouses and actually you could see the biofilter there um, that students built. Uh, and then that big building on the top of the hill there, that is our shower house and our other bathroom that also has Clevis Multrum toilets. Um, this is walking into the bathrooms. Uh, we also have hot showers, hot solar powered showers in our shower house um, and probably the best outdoor shower that you will have ever seen um, also exists in the shower house. Um, so there are currently six showers total um, in the shower house and four bathrooms. Um, and again, these are Cleo Smaltrum. They're not a foam flushing, but they're more like you would find in an outhouse. Um, and this is the view from the shower house, looking out over Hurricane Sound, over to Greens Island, uh, pretty much due east. Uh, it's a great way to start the day. Um, so how do we get our water? How do we get all of our, um, uh, basically all of our water needs? That picture there, would you pause it for a sec, please, Jen? <laughs> yeah, I will control that, you. Just tell that me picture it. there um, was actually a picture of our pump house. So this is, a, this is our quarry right here. Water is solar pumped from our quarry up to our pump house that holds um, 
four 500 gallon tanks and then it is gravity fed to the rest of the island from there. Um, so all of our showers, all of our water use in the galley, that is all gravity fed um, and no power involved, which is amazing. Um, the quarry is also where we do climbing. We'll see a little bit more of that later. Um, but this is a quarry from the original uh, quarry. It was a hurricane was a quarry from 1870 to 1914. Um, so it is still there, still beautiful, and it is still very functional to us, not only to give us water, but also for our climbing here. Um, that's another option for students to come uh, for another programming option for students to engage in. Um, this is a picture of one of our gardens. This is our smaller garden. We do the best we can. Would you pause it, please, Jen? We do the best we can to grow as much food on Hurricane as possible. Um, a lot of what that ends up being is a lot of greens. We can grow a lot of greens on Hurricane. Um, and uh, I think our chef, Marguerite uh, Grifka, is on here. She can attest to how amazing those greens actually are. Um, so a big part an important part of what we want to do is to generate as much as we can on the island and not have to um, resource that out. Um, everything, all of our other food is um, sourced as locally as, as it can be. Um, so that picture that you saw of the circle, <laughs> before every dinner, um, we gather everyone in the entire facility. Um, and at six o'clock, we welcome everyone with a dinner circle. It's a very important part of the community for us. And um, it's a time where we share announcements. Uh, and then you saw a video of the um, mess hall in there. Again, when we have 60 people on the island, the mess hall is a jamming place to be. And this is a video of uh, our um, community style dining, buffet style, students serve themselves, and then uh, we all wash the dishes together after. And sometimes we're lucky enough to have a pizza night using our pizza oven, which is amazing. Um, and we also have a couple fire pits, which are really, really fun. Um, it's a great way to end the day with your students. Um, and we provide the uh, fixins for s'mores, which of course you gotta have s'mores when you're having a fire on an island. It's amazing. CB, do you wanna look at any more of the classroom spaces or are you good with those and wanna move on? Um, it just skipped those for me, so I'm, I would love to go back to those. All right, we're going to um, go back to those. And thank you. Yep. Um, so we get a, again, this is the swallow's nest. So where, what are your options for teaching? Um, this is the bunkhouse, or this is connected to the bunkhouse, the swallow's nest. We can fit around 60 people in there. Uh, we have chairs and tables um, enough to support that, um, and we use this for most of our large programs. We also have an amazing workspace underneath. Uh, it's called the swallow's nest. Yeah, I'm not sure why it's skipping, but we, we can move on, Jen. Okay. Um, but we do have a couple other teaching spaces. One of them is our lab. Um, that's where a lot of programs post up, and we have um, field guides in there. We have boots for everyone. We have microscopes. Uh, this is a video of our classroom space. Um, this is kind of a mid-sized space, and it obviously has an amazing view um, and is one of the only teaching spaces that has a heat source in the form of a small wood-fired stove. Um, and so we have classes of max out to 20, 25 people in there. Um, and then lastly, we have our lab space. Uh, there's our small library. Um, this is a teaching space that holds about 15 students in it. Um, you can see our workbench there, our large middle work table. And um, we do have power in all of these spaces as well. Um, so we can kind of transform them to meet your needs and your students' needs. And this is just a view of the campus in general. Um, and we have gourds hanging in the tree because we were preparing for one of our farm to table dinners, which you're all welcome to join us for as well. You can find more info about those on our website and they also happen three times a year. Um, and they're really fun and um, our staff gets to really uh, Kind of turn it up there. We all show up in our our, our fancy clothes, <laughs> which gets us out of our waders in our boots. <laughs> um, and then was that it, Jen? Ah, there we go. So the big, the big obvious amazing classroom space is the island itself. Um, this is some footage showing students exploring the inter intertidal zone. We have access to intertidal zones all around our island. Um, this is the uh, freshwater pond, our ice pond, where students do what I was talking about the, before, the, um, uh, the raft challenge. And then we have a few miles worth of um, island trails 
So this is a view looking north over to Vinyl Haven and also the site of our future research station right there. That will be our new cove. Um, so we really, again, the island is our biggest classroom and our best classroom. And again, the whole goal is to get students engaged with the world around them. Um, so you can highlight terrestrial ecosystems, you can highlight marine ecosystems, you can highlight geology. Um, and we have not only um, middle and high schools that come and do this, but we have multiple field, field courses that come and use Hurricane. Uh, Brown brings their geology, they bring a geology program to Hurricane and have a field trip there every year. Um, University of Vermont brings a marine ecology field course to Hurricane each year, uh, or I'm sorry, every other year. Um, so, you know, the possibilities are endless and it really is about creating the experience um, that you want for your students that will best highlight what you're interested um, in teaching them uh, and really using the island as, as a tool for that. Um, I'm an experiential learner. This is the best way that I learn. Um, so I hope that can be for a lot of your students as well. We also have an archeology span program. Um, like I said, Hurricane was a quarry town from 1870 to 1914. Um, there's a lot of really unique evidence of that time. Um, and so we have an archeology span program that is not only looking at this time, but also years before. So digging through the past of what Hurricane was before there was ever um, civilization there and how it was used by, um, uh, members of the Penobscot Nation um, as a stopover. So, you know, we don't have a lot of understanding around that. So there's still a lot of work to be done there. Um, so if you're interested in bringing students and signing students up and joining for a volunteer day and coming for a farm to table and hosting a field course um, or coming out and hosting a retreat for your organization, we would love to chat with you about that. Um, and again, uh, we have maybe just a minute or two for in the interest of time uh, a little bit of time for questions if everyone's okay with sticking around for another but you can also feel free to email us at both of those emails and we will be posting the videos from before each of the virtual tour pieces as its own chunk so you can go through and watch at your own speed um, and yeah phoebe and i are happy to stick around for a few more minutes and answer questions um, and then we will um, make sure that if there are any that are left from either our Facebook feed or from here that we answer them online um, in the comments for each video. So thank you all for joining us today. And um, yeah, we will take any other questions, but otherwise have a wonderful Earth Day. We wish we were physically with you out on Hurricane, um, but we know we will be soon, so. Oh, and actually one more thing, everyone. If you are interested, um, we're gonna be sending out to those of you who provided an address for us as you signed up, we're gonna be sending out folders with information. Um, if you didn't provide an address or if we don't have your address, please feel free to send it to Jen or I, uh, and we'll make sure that you get a folder with info on our programs, um, uh, all of our programs, all the options and about who we are and what we do. And I am just seeing a ton of love coming up in the chat. Everything yeah. from I'm seeing <laughs> Salman and Ronnie and Andrew, everybody is just uh, sending the love. So thank you all for, for all of that. I'm currently not seeing any other questions coming in. Love you all then. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Made our day. Um, we yes. hope you made yours. So <laughs> have a good one. Um, and thank you again for joining us. We really, really appreciate it. Right. Thank you. Stay safe. Stay, safe. Stay healthy.